Welcome to Thomaston Place Auction Galleries here in Thomaston, Maine. We are going to do a, a video tour of some of the objects in our upcoming auction on Saturday and Sunday, the 14th and 15th of November. And we'd like you to enjoy the walkthrough with me as we discuss some of the items that are in this upcoming sale. So this fine piece right here is lot 1001 extremely rare piece of 18th century French Canadian furniture. You can see all these little white star spots here and there because someone through the years unfortunately had painted this with white enamel and someone has painstakingly chipped off all the white enamel down to this wonderful original old dump cart blue with the, uh, the old red accent trim. What makes this so rare is this is a 18th century Canadian diamond point cupboard and as you can see they have these solid wood carved diamond points in the doors very thick construction very heavy construction to the 18th century Canadian furniture the other thing that it gives away as being Canadian is the stanchion posts that are part of the whole framework go right down through and become the feet uh, but they use very heavy construction of the wood, uh, big huge dovetails, single dovetails on the drawers because of the, you know, the lack of sophisticated tools in that period. Uh, but this is a spectacular, colorful, uh, would be a spectacular, colorful addition to anyone's collection of uh, country furniture or a Canadian collector uh, or someone that's just an extremely rare piece of furniture. Uh, a fellow bought this at an auction, I believe, in somewhere in Maryland, and it was a painting of Thomas Jefferson. This painting on top was actually a later painting painted over an original painting. He found the signature, and it's by Mather Brown, a very uh, famous portrait artist, and it's probably more than likely of an 18th century clergyman. It's much more valuable than the later painting of Jefferson uh, because of who painted it. Mather Brown is a, a very uh, important uh, painter of portraits in the 18th century. We were called out on it. We were all called out to this estate in Owlsboro, and this was out on the, uh, on the grounds of the estate, and a totally handmade, possibly one of a kind, more than likely one of a kind, Native American uh, with a, but this is all hand cut out of, hammered and cut out of copper. And of course he has a hatchet and a quiver with a bow and a, the, a little a leather pouch on the side. But it's interesting how they did the grass. It's all individually look, it cut into a sheet of copper. So the entire weather vane, including the piece that goes on the roof of the building, is all handmade of, the, of, of copper. And the what's into the end of the arrow is hammered copper like a, like a uh, so it would look like an arrowhead. So it's a really wonderful uh, one-of-a-kind weather vane with a, a native theme to it uh, from an estate in Osborne, Maine. This came out of a general store and what it would have in here would have been pictures of the seeds that were in these bins. These are little seed bins and they would have the pictures of each seeds and sometimes they would take the wood out. You see this wood here? Oh no, these are permanently fixed, so they did have a picture. But a lot of times, in the later ones, they had the actual seeds in between the glass. So you could see, you know, if you had bird seed or whatever kinds of seeds they were. We think this is probably uh, for a drugstore more than a general store because of all the drawers up here. They're all evenly uh, spaced and made the same way. Beautiful dovetail construction. And this was probably used by a druggist in a drugstore to hold different um, powdered uh, medicines that they would formulate into uh, prescriptions. But it's a very wonderful piece. The color, the color is spectacular. Um, never seen another one quite like it actually. And uh, came out of a, a state uh, house call in Western Maine. This is a handmade replica of an ancient Spanish druggist cabinet or apothecary cabinet. This is all totally handmade, hand painted and carved. And every little drawer has all the ingredients for different remedies. And if that's not, we even have a, this here shows the diagram. 
But if that's not enough, they kept the extremely rare ingredients in here. But it's spectacular where every inch of it is hand painted and handmade. And this was in Western Maine too. The original is in a museum in Spain. So somebody must have the exact dimensions and diagrams and pictures and everything and wanted to have one and they made this by hand. A rare, rare piece. This uh, lovely little paint decorated kas, K-A-S as they're called, and it's a, uh, that's a term that they use for Dutch cupboards. And this one has, of course, tulips and stuff painted on it and in spectacular color, ending in little bun feet. This is 18th century and Scandinavian with the original baluster hinges on it. A very nice piece too. Uh, lot 2376 in our sale on Sunday is this fantastic uh, Stella music box. These were made in Switzerland at the turn of the century. This is a particularly high-end model. As you can see, the case is dark mahogany where they light a mahogany center. It says the word Stella. Stella was like the Rolls Royce of the music boxes is in a disc music box. A disc music box is basically like an early, it really is one of the earliest types of computer or digital uh, signaling. This one was copyrighted in 1896. And <clears throat> the, uh, the great things about these is that they could put in, they would punch in the different notes throughout the disc. And then when you put it in the player, these little teeth right here would show you how the whole thing works. It's absolutely genius. I, I, I still am convinced that this was part of the inspiration of computers, but what do I know? Anyway, this one has all kinds of paperwork with it, beautiful condition, and wait till you hear the sound of this when it plays. So these discs are very flexible. They fit right in all over this little hole like this, and you push this lever down like this, and then it plays. The tone of these is amazing, that those little tiny steel teeth are reflecting this kind of music. The tonal range of these is fantastic, and when you close the lid, you get another whole different sound. This one has a carved oak leaf front on it uh, and it has brass handles and extra storage for more discs. This one is even rarer than usual because it came with a original stand, with a period stand, and has I think 60 extra discs with it. And they're all in nice shape. So you got 60 or 70 different pieces of music that go with this particular model. This came to us from a home in Western Maine. Uh, is estimated only three to five thousand dollars. It's a Stella Model 64. It's the exact model number. And you can. Uh, it also has an adjuster, so you can make it go slower or faster, depending on how you thought the sound, the music, or the actual music was made when it was recorded. We usually keep it right about midway. When it comes around to this notch, it'll stop. It's amazing, though, how they can make those, uh, those holes make that music. Who could be smart enough to figure out how, where to put them is what I want to know. The same thing is this, that you have with the player piano is the same basic uh, workings where they had the paper pieces with the holes punched in the paper rolls. It's very similar to that. Anyway, this is incredible condition and a spectacular piece of uh, uh, music history, music box history. So this is locked. Um, 2010 on Sunday 
And this is all hand carved, a wonderful, whimsical hat rack cane stand hall tree. And you can see every inch of it is carved all the way down to the base where they have these two young beavers uh, about to attack the tree. And it's really sort of the, uh, a folk art piece, which would be great in any uh, Adirondack cottage. And this piece is estimated at $1,000 to $1,500. There's another, there's another um, Scandinavian. Uh, these are all done in soft wood and paint decorated. This one here is a, again, a nice little cupboard with shelves. This one they had cut the shelves back to have a flat screen TV in here, so it wasn't showing. And in here, you see all these notches? That's where they used to hang the original 18th century pewter spoons. They would put all the pewter spoons in there. And this is a very interesting, uh, again, an apothecary style cabinet with multiple drawers and, and doors. Uh, that has a very Shaker-esque feeling to it for the simplicity of it. And it's in a wonderful old sort of blue-gray paint. Um, again, nice deep drawers. You can see that it's had all kinds of things in it through the years. But more than likely, <clears throat> it was for used in a, uh, a druggist store. Or it could have been even in a, um, in a general store. What an interesting cupboard with all the drawers and stuff, Lot 1008. So this uh, wonderful painting of the little girl in red sitting in her chair uh, is very unusual because she's holding a gold watch with a gold watch chain and fob, which is unusual for a child to have something that valuable in their hands. And she's sitting in a little curled arm chair with um, striped blue and white striped socks. This painting was probably done somewhere around 1830s or so. Um, came in on free appraisal day. I uh, thought it had a lot of charm to it and it has a very unusual frame. It's sort of toned to match the background. And then they did red in here with alternating gold leaf stamping, which is very unusual. It's a much later frame, but it, it certainly works with the picture. That's, I think the estimate on her is two to 3,000. This is a, a possibly one of a kind handmade 18th century uh, metal rooster uh, through the years. Of course, kids have shot at it. So there's a little hole in the tail and a little hole in the body, but it sort of adds to the, uh, the charm of this piece because of the age it survived, you know, all these years. Uh, it's an old black surface uh, and just a really nice uh, little, uh, sculpture and weather vane. So lot 1052 is this very interesting 18th century burl bowl. When you see these big knuckles coming out of the side of the tree, these big cur uh, uh, burls on the side of the trees, the Native Americans used to cut those off and they would make these burl bowls out of by hand and then they were and then later on uh, they were ability to for in the 18th century, people had a lathe and they would do these turnings on them. So they got a little more detail. But this is a solid burl bowl from the 18th century. Uh, this was found in a storage unit in Southern Maine. And that uh, should bring somewhere between $1,500 and $2,000. But you can see the wonderful burl work in it. And it has the original uh, shellac finish on it that they would have done in the, in the period. Of the uh, painting from the turn of the century, um, a 19th century painting is exquisitely done by Hermann Herzog. He was a German immigrant, came to America and painted with Albert Bierstadt and other of the Luminous School painters, the Hudson River School painters. And as you can see, the detail in here is absolutely exquisite. This is a beautiful condition. The sign down here, Herzog, and it's an original period frame. Did a lot of great paintings in his lifetime and his paintings are in major museums and collections all over the world. So a, a rare painting, we've handled a few Bierstads lately and he's extremely hard to find, but we've been fortunate enough to find some of his first pieces. This is like 1060. It's a lovely woodland scene, has a, 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 a beautiful detailing, the light coming through here, through the trees. This one is in a period frame again, and Albert Bierstadt is a very sought after 
American uh, Hudson River School painting and luminous painter. Uh, that was estimated at uh, 30 to 50,000. And she bring that all day. That's a superb example of his work. So uh, lot uh, 1259 is a lovely um, painting by Gustave Courbet. He is uh, uh, was a, like um, Rousseau and Corot. He is in the group of painters, uh, uh, the group of uh, the Barbizon School of Painters. Uh, they were known for doing uh, very, um, very rich looking. Um, but had a lot of dark areas in the way they did their pictures and estimated at 10 to 15,000. Again, this is an original period frame. Uh, it's very important to have the original frames whenever it's possible. And this one here is another 18th century piece of American formal furniture and it's done in walnut. And that is a, is a Chippendale four draw chest with OG, gold OG feet. But what makes it uh, us able to establish the area it may have come from is the fact that it has this applied molding to the top edge, which was traditionally done in Connecticut cabinetry, uh, excuse me, New Jersey cabinetry, and also it has this fluted column down the side and bold OG feet. That's usually a trademark, a trademark of the New Jersey cabinet makers for some reason, and so we have cataloged it as a. New Jersey, 18th century New Jersey walnut chest. But it does have replaced brasses. The original brasses would have been uh, big Chippendale uh, batwing brasses. Uh, these are uh, later brasses from around 1800, 1810. Uh, lovely little chest of drawers, though, small size and estimated at 1,500. So a lot 1,004 and a lot 1,029 and a lot 1,020. These are American tinsmith pieces that were decorated they, that's called a, a tollware and they call this toll painting it's part freehand and part stenciled and this is a nice what they call a lighthouse form teapot a water pot and these all three of these pieces of tollware came from the uh, Mead uh, family collection on Osborough, Maine lovely little pieces of tollware in very good shape seeing that these were used every day uh, for making hot water or tea. A lovely gilded metal rooster uh, was found in the, was in the kitchen of the Mead uh, house in on Osborough. And they had had this bracket made, so it mounted to the wall. And so we put it up that way. A lot of, of um, the weather vanes today are actually put on the walls like this rather than put outside because they're so valuable. They're very sculptural. And, and really add a nice decorative element uh, to a room that they're in. The other thing is if you have them off the wall a little bit, they cast a neat shadow and it, it, when they lit up properly and it gives you a wonderful sculptural effect, uh, overall sculptural effect to the object. Lot 1108 is a lovely painting by Brian Cody of Mount Desert Island. And after, uh, in, this, in the manner of Fitzhenry Lane, and this is a great painting if you can't afford a two or three million dollar Fitzhenry Lane. This one is only six to eight thousand dollars. Enjoyable picture. And we have uh, three other paintings by Brian Cooley. Lot number 1083 is a lovely major picture by Wesley Eldridge Weber. Uh, he was from Gardner, Maine, and uh, the, it's titled The Rescue. And as you can see, these guys have been have anchors out here trying to keep the storm, and anchors out here trying to keep the storm from taking the boat over. And there's a, it looks like a, sort of a steam tug coming to rescue the boat with a handling of this picture, the quality of the work and the, the light coming through, this translucent light coming through the waves and things like this, very significant in a, in a fine nautical picture. And all the rigging, the way the sails have torn and the wind is blowing. You see a couple of gentlemen up here and here. You see a guy with a rope ready to come and hook the tug to the ship. 
huge big signature in here, W. Weber 1875, uh, and it's in a period frame which again adds to the value of the picture. And uh, this came to us from a house called in Southwest Harbor, Maine. And that was estimated that was estimated at six to nine thousand dollars. Love the original picture in great condition by Wesley Weber from Maine. This is a, a beautiful picture uh, of the Norumbega. It was a passenger boat, and this would take people back and forth to the islands. Uh, it's by William G. Bunker. He's a 19th century painter. He's dated 1909, or dated 09 for 1909. And you see passengers on the, on the decks here. The lady with a long dress, blouse, more for ladies here, nice tag. But what makes this a wonderful picture, it has, the man has talent, but it's not so crisp and tight that you would say he was only a marine painter. Uh, adding to the value, though, is this wonderful flag that says Norumbega, and a U.S. here, and American flag here. Just nice, untouched condition, the original frame, the way we got it out of the estate in Rockland, Maine. And this one is estimated at two to three thousand, worth that all day long. Lot 1091 is this uh, bronze cannon on a on a later carriaging. Of course, the the the, the wooden carriage is hardly ever lasted. But this is an old old handmade replica. It is a Royal Navy pattern cast bronze cannon, and it's estimated two to three thousand. Saturday, we have a vast collection of incredible Chinese objects from the early times until the 19th century. Um, there's a, a real great collection of carved furniture that came out of one estate. These cabinets are amazing the way they were done. We have in this Asian section we have uh, Japanese and Chinese goods. The um, Chinese things are on Saturday and the Japanese things will be sold on Sunday. An extensive collection of Asian items. I think there's over 125 items on on uh, Saturday and Sunday of Asian objects. 1393 is a very rare uh, Chinese tea caddy. It has the, as you see, the butterfly or moth is all carved in green jade or jadeite. And when we found it, all of this hand engraved, floral engraved silver was just as black as anything, and we cleaned it up. But what's nice is it's fitting over this carved Hungalai wood box in beautiful condition. And you know how treasured it is because somebody made this silk covering that's all hand stitched in the shape of a butterfly that fits exactly over this box. And it's estimated to eight to twelve hundred. I suspect it'll bring much more because of its rarity, but that's our preliminary estimate for it. But look at the quality of this piece. It's just amazing to have the thought of how to put this all together and everything fits perfectly. It fits perfectly on there. So this is a wonderful piece here. I was on a house call in Seal Harbor, Maine, where I was again yesterday, and this was in the uh, leaning against the wall in one of the bedrooms. I said to the lady, this is a fabulous early door off of a tabernacle from a Catholic church. And it's all repose tooled in copper. And down here it's in bronze. But you can see how the, uh, it originally would have been gilded too, uh, which the gilding is worn off. But look at the fabulous metal work that somebody did in the uh, probably 17th century was my guess. And uh, this is lot um, 1353 and estimated $1,000 to $1,500. But if you love high quality handmade early things, this is a spectacular thing to hang on the wall and uh, very, you know, very, very decorative. Lot 1358 is a pair of 18th century reliquaries. Uh, these are uh, very interesting and they're in wooden shadow boxes. Each of the two medallions is surrounded by full cut filigree wire ribbons. And on the one of them is Pope Clement XII medallion, 1730 to 1740. 
and the other is Pope Innocent the Thirteenth, seventeen twenty one to seventeen twenty four. Those so these are religious reliquaries uh, commemorating these two popes and uh, made in the eighteenth century. Yes. But this one's interesting because it has it has wax intaglios of the saints, and in here it has a, a huge green stone simulating an emerald, and it, and in here a citrine, with, and it's all woven with silver and gold gold wire, silver and gold wire. This is a 17th century Northern European sculpture in ivory, depicting a ceremony, um, and it was made so it could fold up and actually be worn as a medallion, or a pendant rather. It's all engraved in ivory from the 17th century. And look at how intricate the carving is on this piece. Just really, really beautiful carving on it, in great condition. It's amazing that this thing survived. This is an oil on copper from the 18th century, depicting a, a lovely Dutch woman with a selection of fruit. Um, and it's unsigned, but we feel that it's around 1710 or 1730. Beautiful condition. You can see the detail, every little seed in that melon and the, the, um, the wonderful shading on the grapes and the peaches and the melons and stuff. Every little detail of the pearls around her neck and, and her headdress. Very unusual piece. It's uh, in a much later 1920s frame. It deserves a much better frame, but that's the way it came in from the estate. And it's estimated at eight to twelve hundred dollars. So we have a, a lot. Twelve fifty one is a seven piece British bronze imperial measures set engraved for the county of Ayr and dated eighteen sixty nine. So lot twenty twenty nine on Sunday is a spectacular condition, very rare, forty eight inch green salesman sample. Store display of an old town canoe. It has all the earmarks of the famous early old town canoe. These are so rare, they usually bring between 10 to 30,000. This one's estimated at 10 to 20,000. The uh, original decals on here that say old town in shaded red and gold, uh, the beautiful patina to the trim work, has all the original hand woven little um, uh, wicker. Uh, woven seats or cane seats, I should say, and all the original stage and see great patina on it. It even has the name of the um, supply shop that sold uh, sporting goods. And it has, of course, the big original Old Town label on the front. Now look at the inside of this thing. It's absolutely pristine condition. Some lucky person is gonna get these. There's only a handful of these in the world. That's why they bring so much and they, and they were fragile, so they didn't exist in this condition. This is an absolutely spectacular model. So that, and one of the other uh, lovely items of, by uh, Tiffany uh, that we have in the sale is this counterbalanced lamp. This is done in patinaed bronze and it's counterbalanced because it has this weight on the back of it that kind of balances so you can adjust to the height. And they often use these in, on desks and also on pianos because you set on the top of the piano, you could push the light down, it would light up the keys just where you needed to see, or your sheet music, depending on what you wanted it for. But most of these, would call, they were sold as desk lamps. And of course, it has that wonderful Tiffany iridescence to the shade. It's not a iridescent, but it's rippled across here. What a wonderful surface to this thing. This is from, we got this in a house in uh, Rockport, Maine. And this is lot 2059 on Sunday. And it's estimated at two to three thousand. If you ever wanted to have a fantastic nightlight or decorative lamp from the Art Deco period, this would this one should certainly suffice. This is a lovely molded glass, almost La Lique like uh, glass with an amber tint. This is uh, lot twenty two nineteen on Sunday. Uh, it's an underlit silhouette bust of a young woman in a cloth hat smelling a rose spectacular piece in beautiful condition it's just a single little light bulb in there and the, the base of it seems to be in stainless steel and it slides right in just like that and there you go that's a beautiful thing these wonderful little low or, or squatty form candlesticks are sterling silver and they're by Bucciolati in the form of a sea urchin 
Bucciolati is a very sought after and collectible designers of sterling silver objects and other things also. Uh, these came to us from an estate in New York City. And these are just lovely, lot 2115, those are on Sunday, and those are estimated at only $1,500. So on Sunday, these exquisite candelabras, they are uh, five arm candelabras, no, nope, six arm candelabras, uh, lot 2242. These are silver plated bronze, exquisite sculptures as candelabras. You can see the woman is sitting or riding on a dolphin, which is absolutely amazing work on these things. The detail is absolutely exquisite, as you can see. And then it goes down to a sort of a floral form ending in seashells. But what I love about it is resting on turtles or tortoises. The whole thing is sort of resting on the back of tortoises with this lobed form base. And then the man is also sitting on a dolphin form uh, sea creature uh, with the turtles and the shells. So it has a real nautical motif to it. I just noticed it even has cattails coming out of the flat, out of these um, leaves right here. There's also cattails and bulbs and floral swags. I doubt you could ever find um, a pair of these any better than this. And they're in a great condition and they're from a uh, collection out of Rockport, Maine, and they are estimated at uh, five to ten thousand, and deservedly so. These are just they, they're just as good as you can get. This is a, uh, a is a gentleman's walking stick or cane. It comes apart in the middle. These are all bra bronze or brass fittings with a snakewood shaft. But the great thing about this is not that it comes apart here, but the top comes off. This is all carved ivory with gilded silver top with French guilloche enamel in turquoise on the, on the, and if you get lost while you're strolling down the street, you simply push this button and the top opens and there's a compass inside that tells you where to go. So if you've had a hard night at the bar and you lost your way, you just look down at the compass and off you go. Isn't that great? This has been made in the turn at the Victorian or turn of the century era and valued at uh, eight to twelve hundred dollars. I doubt, I doubt you could find another one of these though. This is probably custom made for somebody very wealthy. These are very, very scarce and rare pieces of majolica. These are for the oyster connoisseurs. This is a, a sort of a tree form stacked majolica piece that held oysters. So if you were having a party, this would be the centerpiece of the table where they were serving the oysters on the half shell. And I love this because it has the fish and an eel for a handle. They're always in this sort of uh, uh, green and the shells, if you look underneath, the shells are done in almost like an oyster colored shell in a sort of a brown tint. That's in beautiful condition. Uh, lot 2256 and Minton Majolica is the Minton is the company that designed and made this particular one and it's uh, estimated five to seven thousand dollars and this was found in a collection in again in Rockport Maine the same folks that had the great taste that had the candelabras you can rotate it like this it's on a rotating base so if uh, Mrs. Hoosie what she was over there and she wanted some, you just swing it around, <laughs> swing it around. And she could have oysters. So I love this piece. It's uh, a custom or handmade piece. Lot 2108 is a sort of like a Puff the Magic Dragon form brooch. Possibly one of a kind. It's an 18 karat solid gold form brooch with the mane has eight diamonds set in the crest with ruby eyes. Beautiful uh, piece of handmade jewelry. Um, very heavy. It has almost 22 penny weight, so it's over an ounce of gold, and it's estimated at 25 to 3,500 dollars. And you can tell how good the workmanship is because it's all, see how the white gold crest where the diamonds are set. In order to get the light in the diamonds correctly, you need a you need a light behind it. So whenever you have a diamond set, it has to have an opening in the back to capture the light. That gives you the extra brilliance that you want. So we have a we have a pair of these fantastic. Art Nouveau leaded glass windows and although Tiffany 
was the most known maker of stained glass windows. These were made, we have the pair we have are made by the Povey brothers. They were um, uh, in Portland, Oregon, and uh, this is a sort of a pre-Raphaelite pre uh, portrait of a woman playing a harp. What's the other thing is great about this is the, the variation in this great colored slag glass and the hand-painted details on the face and the flowers and on the gown. You see, that's all hand-painted on the stained glass. They have uh, oak frames and uh, in a very, very nice condition considering that they're from the Art Nouveau period, which would have been about 1905. Survived all these years. I was working in the office on a weekend and this lady showed up with these wonderful original drawings by Tasha Tudor. I asked her, how did you get these? And she said that she was a teacher in a um, children's art class at the Hillsborough Elementary School in New Hampshire. And Tasha came and gave a talk and did several drawings. And we have, I think, five or six of her original drawings and different animals uh, that she had done. Uh, very sought after. Her work is very sought after. And these should bring easily $1,000 to $1,500 a piece. And this is what? 2006 on Sunday. So uh, the items we're looking at right now are two photographs that were found over in the Damascotta, Maine area. And these are by Milton H. Green. Uh, Marilyn Monroe poses in the studio as part of the Black Sitting series, one of Green and Monroe's ultimate achievements in New York in 1956. And uh, but the original price tags are still on the back of $600. Uh, they have um, uh, signature labels on the back and they are in uh, brushed aluminum frames with um, acid-free matting and museum glass. These were in this private family collection for years. So one of the uh, one of the outstanding paintings in the sale on Sunday is this a lovely uh, picture with animals by uh, Dolly Ibcar. She was from Maine and Vermont, and uh, she lived 100 years from 1917 to 2017. And uh, this is estimated at 10 to 15 thousand. I'm sure it'll bring much more. We've had it bring 20, 30, 40 thousand. Uh, but this came from a private family. Uh, in here in Maine. And it's called Kahuna Sunset Oil on Linen. Signed and dated lower left 1994. Spectacular picture in perfect condition. And some lucky uh, winner is going to get that piece. So I love Fabergé carvings. Uh, this one is not necessarily by Fabergé, but it's a wonderful example of a Russian carved stone polar bear figure carved in uh, white chalcedony of a polar bear mounted with cabochon ruby eyes in the original fitted box with a St. Petersburg mark on it. A lovely uh, little animal figure at $1,000 to $1,500. It's lot 2098 on Sunday. A lot of the carvers that did work for, um, that did work for uh, Fabergé were actually German carvers uh, that they uh, brought in to do the stone cutting or stone carving. And they did a lot of work for Fabergé. But you see the beautiful detail. Every little piece of fur is carved in this piece. You see the fur wrinkling down on his leg. And even the underside is nicely done. See the fur glistening right there. It goes in that little fitted box. And it's all padded so when you close up the box, it's all protected. Lot 2779 on Sunday is by James Edward Fitzgerald, the wonderful painter from who painted a lot of things on Monhegan. Probably this was one of the things he painted on Monhegan. We have sold a lot of his work through the years, including a world record price for an oil of uh, lobster and yellow slickers. But this one is a seagull swarm over fish, watercolor, and paper. And this one is estimated at six to eight thousand. Uh, by James Edward Fitzgerald, a wonderful Monhegan painter. Uh, a lot of nice action in that. His style is so recognizable that you can be across the room if you know his work and spot his uh, style. 